Hi, I'm Bob. Let's solve problems one to six for Chapter Seven: Multiple Regression Analysis with Qualitative Information. In the textbook Introductory Econometrics, a modern approach, the seventh edition. For the first problem, we find that the t statistic of the estimate for male equals two point five six, and its p value is. 0.011. The sleeping time difference between male and females is statistically significant at the five percent level. Men sleep 88 minutes per week more than women on average, holding the other variables in the model fixed. It is strong evidence. For the second question, the t statistic for total working time is minus 9.01. And its p-value is zero to the three decimal places. It is a statistically significant trade-off between working and sleeping. One more minute spent working leads to 0.16 minutes less spent sleeping, or one more hour of work reduces sleeping by 9.8 minutes, holding the other variables in the model fixed. For the third part. In addition to the unrestricted model, we need the restricted model to conduct the F test. The restricted model does not contain age and its quadratic term, since the restriction is that they are zero. We can save the R squared and the sum of squared residuals. Then we run the unrestricted model with the two age variables. We also save the R squared and the sum of squared residuals. Next, we can use the formula to compute the F statistics from either the R squares or the sums of squared residuals. The R squared form and the sum of squared residuals form of the F statistics are the same, 1.387. The p-value is 0.25. The age and its square are jointly insignificant at any conventional level. We could not reject the null hypothesis that age has no effect on sleeping, holding other factors fixed. In Stata, we could use the test command to do the f-test after running the unrestricted model, that is the long model with the age variables. It gives the same answer as using the F statistics formula. Let's do the second problem. It is about birth weight. In part one, we find that one more cigarette smoked per day reduces the baby's birth weight by 0.44 percent, holding other factors fixed. In other words, the birth weight drops by 4.4 percent. From smoking ten more cigarettes daily, the effect is statistically significant at the one percent level with a t statistic of minus five point one one. In part two, we find that a white child is predicted to weigh five point five percent more than a young white child, holding other factors in the first model fixed. The difference is statistically significant at one percent level, with a t statistic of 4.20. A more precise estimate is 5.6 percent. In part three, we find that one more year of the mother's education increases the baby's birth weight by 0.3 percent, or 
Ten more years of mother's education lead to a three percent increase in the child's birth weight. The effect is practically small, and it is not statistically significantly different from zero at any conventional level. With a t-statistic of minus 1.00 and a p-value of 0.317, in the fourth part, if we want to perform the F test, we should use the same sample in the restricted and unrestricted models. The unrestricted regression has fewer observations, probably because of missing data on parents' education. We will have to re-estimate the restricted model using the same 1,191 observations as in the unrestricted model, and then conduct the F test. Let's find answers to problem number three. In part one, the t statistic for the square of the school size is minus 4.16, and its p-value is zero to three decimal places. It is strong evidence that we should include it in the model. The optimal high school size can be obtained when the partial effect of high school size on SAT scores equals zero. The optimal size is 440 students. For part two, holding school size fixed. Among young black students, females have 45.09 fewer points in SAT than males. The T statistic for the variable female is minus 10.51, and its p-value is zero to three decimal places. The difference is statistically significant at any conventional level. For part three. The female dummy equals zero for the male students. Among males, black students have 169.81 fewer points than young black students on average, holding school size fixed. The low hypothesis that there's no difference between their scores is beta black equals zero. The alternative that there's a difference is beta black does not equal zero. The t statistic is minus thirteen point three six, and its p value is zero to three decimal places. The difference is statistically significant at any conventional level. We reject the low hypothesis of no difference in the SAT scores between young black males and black males. For the last part, among the females, the difference in SAT scores between Black and non-black females is minus 107.5 points. There are various ways to test its significance. We can design a model containing a parameter that is the difference in SAT between black and non-black females. Beta four is what we want. We can read its standard error, t statistic, and p value from the stata result window. The regression shows that the t statistic is minus 8.29, and the p value is zero to three decimal places. The difference is statistically significant at any reasonable level. Another way is to perform an F test after the original regression. We test whether the sum of the coefficients on the last two variables is zero. It gives the same conclusion. The third way is to divide the students into four groups: black male, young black male, black female, and young black female. Using the black female as the base group and adding three dummy variables to the model. We can find the estimate and its t statistic for the young black female dummy. Let's go to problem number four. We can use the describe command to find the four groups of firms in the model. They are industrial firms. 
financial firms, consumer product firms, and transportation or utility firms. Since the base group is the industrial firms, the estimate for utility is the approximate percentage difference between these two types of firms. The utility firm's salary is 28.3% lower than the industrial firm's. The T statistic is minus 2.85 and the p-value is 0.005. The difference is statistically significant at the 1% level. The exact percentage difference is 24.6%. It becomes smaller in magnitude. The approximate percentage difference in estimated salary between consumer product firms and financial firms is 2.29%. The F statistic is 0.06 and its p-value is 0.813. It is not statistically significant at any conventional level. We can also write a model to directly see the salary difference and its standard error t-statistic and p-value. It gives the same conclusion. Let's complete problem 5 together. If no PC is used in place of PC in the model, the intercept becomes beta 0 hat plus delta 0 hat. The coefficient on no PC is minus delta 0 hat. The estimated equation is as follows. We can verify the relationship. In part 2, the R squared is unchanged because the information used in the models is the same. For part 3, PC and no PC should not both be included in the model along with an overall intercept because it will fall into the dummy variable trap. No PC is a perfect linear function of PC. Let's find answers to problem 6. It is about the omitted variable bias. Suppose the true relationship is that the log of wages is a function of whether participating in the job training program, education, experience, and ability. In the regression, we omit the ability, so the error term contains the unobserved worker ability. From chapter 5, we know that the probability limit of beta 1 hat is the sum of the true parameter beta 1 and the bias part. In the bias part, we know beta 4 is positive because more ability leads to a higher wage. If less able workers are more likely to be selected for the training program, that is, the covariance between training and ability is negative, then the bias part is negative. Therefore, the ORS estimate is downward biased. We underestimate the effect of the trailing program on wages. When we analyze the bias, we hold education and experience fixed. 
Thank you very much for solving the problems with me. See you soon. Thank you for watching this video and subscribing to my YouTube channel. See you next time.